Yeah, how can we build a new grid? Um, well, the hard part is you can't really just take out the electromagnetic grid. Um, there's ways mm -hmm. to actually decode electricity itself, but you got to take those on at the power plant. Um, your biggest thing is, and this is kind of what I was given once I was kind of showing um, this issue on, you know, uh, we're opening up, but we have all these power lines which are kind of throwing our spiritual ability and spiritual senses out of out of balance. Um, so once I was kind of showing this, that's where they started really giving me the technology so that I could understand it. It took me about a year to kind of start really understanding the mechanics for how all this vibration was really working. And I worked with a lot of other technologies as well, you know, as I was kind of going through my path. Um, and eventually I, I kind of just came to the realization, well, we need technology to neutralize what's actually in our environment so that we can get this, um, like, stabilized vibrational energy, which neutralizes all these external thoughts. That way we can just kind of be inside of ourselves. And, you know, that's what I kind of worked about, you know, the last uh, eight years I've been working on one main technology, which is called Sacred G. Um, but the whole purpose of that was to essentially just neutralize all of these external vibrations so that I was really just in my own energy. And even more so, my body supported me and my decisions and where I wanted to go. And if I wanted to change the world in a positive way, my body wouldn't beat me up. It wouldn't hold me back. It wouldn't sabotage me. Um, in fact, it does the opposite. It brings on, like, amazing people, um, <laughs> you know, and it just makes things happen. It takes care of me. And... It's very, very different than, than before where it used to beat me up. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm so glad that you've figured it out, you know. I'm so glad that you're in a, your universe and your environment supports you now. So that, the biggest thing that I've been doing, I mean, once I realized all this and we actually came up with a good solution, you know, I was figuring out how to get this solution out there to as many people as possible, especially for the, all the light workers and, and especially children who are coming to this world already spiritually opened up. And then they come into this world and all of a sudden everything goes chaotic because our environmental vibration systems in chaos. Um, mm -hmm. And so my entire quest literally for about the last six years was figuring out how to get this technology out there, how to make it more powerful, how to make it cheaper for people, um, and, uh, you know, how to, spread, how to spread this word, you know, most effectively to, uh, to help a lot of people who, who don't actually have to go through a lot of the struggle and turmoil that, you know, that I went through. Mm -hmm. And that a lot of us that all went through, we, we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the road for others. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just got to be somebody. <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> yeah, true. Because <laughs> it can get rough, that's for sure. Um, so, uh, you know, the real cool thing is, is, you know those moments when you, it's like everything in your brain comes together and all of a sudden you feel so connected with life. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's like you rise up above yourself and you can see everything you've been doing for like 10 or 20 years or, or even five years. And you just see how big you are, you know, how like spiritually magnificent you are on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know those moments? They never oh, seem yeah. to happen off of that day. Um. What that that's a conscious realization of a gamma brainwave state. Mm -hmm. uh, it's when you're consciously experiencing it in its fullness, um, and it's where you see your own height, your own glory, and your own power, and what you're capable of. Um, they never ever last long enough either. <laughs> Did you notice that? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when you're there, you're like, oh, this has to go there. Oh, we can do this, and these are all the steps, and here's how it's all going to happen, and like everything is so predictable and easy, right? when you're there <laughs> yeah and it's like we come back down and we're in this chaos and confusion um <laughs> <laughs> well thank god we don't have the the big brain in this little body <laughs> so um what we've been working on is is how to get into that space you know as as often as possible and, and to stay connected and it just so happens that your pineal gland is literally like, uh, you know, is like a cell phone tower that's inside of your own brain. It's a connector. It's a communicator with all of life. And that just happens to be where this compound dimethyltryptamine is produced. And it's the gamma wave that triggers the, the release of this compound. Now, 
the pineal gland is, is essentially, so we're looking for this collective, so we can always be linked up with everybody. We can always be in this flow, and we can have that energy going. And not only that, but we want the spiritual abilities. We want to be able to be able to feel what somebody else is feeling. Or when somebody's speaking to us and telling us a story, we want to be right there with them, actually feeling what they were feeling and, and connecting with them on a deeper level than what was, you know, previously humanly possible. You know? <laughs> We want to, uh, you know, when we look at people, we want to be able to see the energy in their fields, what's going on, what colors are there, where's energy fluctuating, you know, where's hot, where's cold. Um, and we want to be able to balance these systems out. You know, we want to um, be able to touch people's bodies or have our own body touched and have sensation that just kind of drives us wild rather than just a dull touch. And we want, we want more. We want sensation. We want the richness of life. And... All of that really comes down to understanding memory and understanding brain waves. And it's understanding essentially the way that our own body works, how our energy flow works. And so that's kind of what I've been training in by all these beings. Um, I haven't even actually shared my story with you guys yet. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Uh, the reason I understand all this stuff was um, was because I was shown it. Um, I got into a really bad car accident, and uh, two really major things happened. The first one was that I lost all my memory um, from before I was 10 years old. So if you know all that baggage that people talk about that you have to clear, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it, it cleared <laughs> just <Wow>. like that. <laughs> Um, which left me in the moment. And you know when you get in that moment, it's so easy to just get your downloads of new information, right? Yeah. Um, I fluctuated between that moment where I was just like completely in the moment, I'm in the zone, um, where I get downloads continuously. And then there's another moment, which most people don't know about, but it's a moment, it's like a f moment. So instead of being like completely here and in the zone, you don't know where you are. It's like existing inside the void. And... Uh, I, when I go into that moment, I wouldn't know where I was. I couldn't recognize anybody. I had no memory at all, uh, no pattern recognition. Um, I literally wouldn't recognize my own girlfriend when I'd be in that moment. And my body would go into this almost like animalistic state. And it was almost like this primordial survival animal type of energy that would be in my body. And uh, when, I, when I'd go into this moment, you know, people, if, if somebody came close, my body would want to attack them like, an, like a scared animal. Uh, it would growl at, at them and stuff. It's really, really weird. And because I, under, because I went through this process so many times and they started teaching me about what this process was, um, it was literally like all the higher parts of my brain were all shut down um, when I'd go into this, into this dark moment, I guess you'd call it. And all that was up was just this total survival energy, this survival nature. And, I, I mean, I can look back at it now and be like, that was so cool. But when I was going through it, it was like, it was really scary. And, and, and you know, it was very scary. Now, when my body would go into this, it would start going into a total state of shock. And when it went into this state of shock, um, that's what would actually trigger the release of this compound, DMT, or, or dimethyltryptamine. And when this compound releases, that's, that's the actual, um, it's the precursor for why near-death experiences happen. Near-death experiences happen because the body gets impacted so hard and there's so much shock to the body that it instantly triggers a gamma wave because there's so much energy generated inside the brain and body at once. And it triggers this compound which lifts you up out of your body and you get these near-death experiences. Um, it's a way to eject the spirit out of the body um, in an elegant way, I guess you could say, so that the spirit's not traumatized after it leaves the body. Um, it might also be the ejection mode as well. <laughs> Either way, when you leave the body, you're feeling fantastic. <laughs> and uh, this would happen uh, about every five days for about five years, um, is literally shooting me up into over 300 of these near-death type of experiences. Um, the longest one lasted uh, in my peak state for over four days. Um, it took about two weeks for it to, to complete itself. Um, but wow. typically they'd range anywhere from four to 12 hours, sometimes up to 16 or, or 20 hours long. And uh, I'd be blasted in these really intense spiritual states. And we actually have a book called Visions of Heaven, which documents about 30 of, uh, of some of the most intense and, and really cool visions that I went through. Um, that should actually be coming out within a week, I think, very quickly. 
Um, and it, when I was there, I, I learned with these beings. Now, I don't know if anybody who's listening has ever done any type of like ayahuasca or uh, hallucinogenic compounds before, but near-death experiences and hallucinogenics are actually very, very similar. Um, a spiritual experience that's induced from a hallucinogenic compound is still um, initiated from a gamma wave that's released inside the brain or, or that triggers that natural DMT, and that, that's what actually gives people spiritual experiences. So whether it's, it's induced um, through trauma, um, which would be kind of like a near-death experience, or whether it's induced manually um, from somebody eating hallucinogenics and then um, doing some internal processing to trigger that gamma wave, where they get the visual, the spiritual experience. They're both very, very similar. Um, if you'd like to know more about every, uh, just that type of conversation, the link between hallucinogenics, uh, dimethyltryptamine, and the near-death experiences, I actually got a two-and-a-half-hour uh, seminar on it. It's part of an Ascension seminar series uh, on the loveactivationtour.com website. This is, it's easy, loveactivationtour.com. Um, you can go on there. There's actually eight classes. It's about 20 hours, and there's 10 hours of audio for follow-up um, to the seminars. And that's just on there for free, um, which is awesome. It's a really, really cool. Um, it's a really cool thing. <laughs> but uh, I, love how, I love how generous you are with your um, with your experiences and your your education. Mm -hmm. You're so informed, and you're so willing to just put it out there. I love it. <laughs> well, we got a whole world here that that's going through this massive ascension process, and we we got to yes. do whatever we can to make this thing happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I have a question, a real fast question. When yeah. you would go through, let's say, that four-day um, span, were, would you be, like, laying in bed, or, like, how how would your physical body be uh, working at the time? Uh, absolutely, unbelievably amazing. <laughs> I mean, what would you do? I mean, like, what, what did your physical body do? Were you sleeping, meditating? Oh, uh, on the on the four-day one, there was so much energy surging through my body. I had literally walked on my tippy toes for about four days. Um, <laughs> I, I could do handstands, and I could feel, like, vortexes of energy, just like the, the earth. You know, the earth got that magnetic, um, that magnetic field that comes out through yeah. the north and wraps around down into the south and comes out. Um, I could yeah. feel that shooting through my body. So I could do a handstand, and I could feel it pulling my legs up, and it would just hold me up up there, and I could just sit like that. Um, I sat on the floor like I was uh, sitting in a lazy boy chair, except I was just on the floor with my legs up, leaning back, hands behind my head, and I watched an entire Simpsons episode um, like that, which is about 30 minutes. No shaking, no nothing. Just I could put my foot up, and I'd be like, look, I can put it here, and it would just stay there. And then I could take my other one, and I could put it uh, like way up and to the left, and i put it there, and it would just stay there. Like it was wow. so linked to energy. It was like... It was. It was actually. It, that was like the most incredible experience of my entire life. There's nothing even close. We downloaded all like new motion systems. How the body actually runs when it's when it's injected full of energy. Like I was inside the new body for like four days. It was like phenomenal. <laughs> um, <laughs> woke up, you know, because I, I slept, but it wasn't really sleeping. I'm in this dreaming, and I, I was in like uh, China, and, and they were showing me like these prophecies of of the future. Because a lot of times they'd show me. Well, they'd show me both. It was sometimes we'd go to other worlds, and they'd show me how other worlds operated so I could gain understanding and belief systems um, of different cultures and different ways to live life more effectively than what's on Earth, which is hard to do if you're just on Earth and this is the way that our world works. You don't really know what any other worlds are like. So they kind of took me out and showed me all these different kind of worlds and how they, how they operated. And I talked with a lot of the people from there, and I told them what my world was like, and they told me what theirs was. Uh, which was which was really interesting, but this one was uh, it was actually in uh, like China, I think it was, and it was kind of like a darker prophecy. It was like when there was no food and people were fighting for food and stuff. And um, so all of a sudden, I woke up out of this dream and I went downstairs and I was kind of like freaking out and panic. And my girlfriend at the time looks at me and she's like, "Corey, Corey, what's wrong?" And I went to answer, but I came out in this other language. Um, and I was trying to speak in English, but every time it came out of my mouth, my mouth would translate it. Now, as soon as it translated into this other language, I could hear this other language wrap back around, come into my ears, and I could hear the language that it was spoken in. And then I'd hear it translate, and it would repeat what I said, but in English, not in this other word, in this other language. And so I started learning. And there's a, you know, in the Bible they talk about it.